What is up, guys? Welcome to the first ever Danger Community Podcast. Now, it's not so much community this time around, because this time I just wanted to have a regular podcast. Uh, it's going to be pretty chaotic with everybody wanting to be in the Discord and talk and everything like that. Um, so just for the first one, just to see how it goes, see how well it does, we're just going to do like a generic podcast uh i got my boy moxie boosted and yubari radicate moxie boosted uh of course from the channel moxie boosted and yubari radicate from the channel yubari radicate uh say hello gentlemen i just like to clarify i'm from the other channel you guys oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> hello hello it's a route one encounter i'm actually um yeah actually he Garfield said it channel he did the thing he said I the thing it. um my dad intro uh, what's up i'm marcos and i'm microphone boosted no 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 i'm marcos <laughs> and i am a garfield youtuber who makes content involving uh movies such as garfield gets real uh okay. garfield a tale of two kitties <laughs> and i've been known to talk about the comic strip uh, on occasion <laughs> Okay. Wow, dude, that's crazy. You changed up your content, man. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I invented Super Saiyan Grade Three Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> he he just turns really spiky, like all over. <laughs> all right, so um, for lasagna. If you guys don't already know, uh, Moxie Boosted has a channel uh, that is very 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 into uh vgc ins and outs of that and then you bar eradicate uh he's done some design shops he does a lot of pokin videos and so it's sort of the uh the multiple different worlds of the pokemon community coming together now hoodlum scrafty or callum was going to be with us uh but he's a very busy man he's ended up canceling like several times so we're just gonna do it without him sorry for everyone who was super excited to have him on the podcast myself included but you know i just wanted to give him shit about talking about how good toxic croak is toxic croak garbage in bbc 2019 <laughs> he did an entire hour like it was like a 30 minute long video with jamie boyd and <laughs> jamie k and they were just talking about oh yeah toxic croak it's great and i'm like get out of here get out of here tapu lele naturally outspeeds it <laughs> It just dies to, like, half the things in the meta right now. Well, there you have it, Callum. If you're listening, uh, Marcos has been saving up that roast for quite some time. And he oh, finally... that's not a roast. Those are just facts. <laughs> I, still, I, still love, I still love him very much. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, you know, besides the two very special guests that I have with me, there's not going to be uh, any hoodlum scrafty this time. Womp womp. Sorry. So, um, I did want to talk about, I was reading the, uh, Tekken 7 patch notes because there's going to be a season two for Tekken 7 and looking through all the, the lists of buffs and nerfs and blah, blah, blah. And it got me thinking about the new VGC sort of formats and how I'm not sure if that, like, I don't know, to my recollection, there's never been such a uh, I guess for me it seems wacky like for me it seems like fighting game style seasons that they're doing oh you mean like, the rotating formats yeah like I know in uh, I know in Pokken we got some updates Machamp got is it release X it's release X right yeah he got release X yeah. it's a uh, it's actually Atlas's uh, or King's Atlas Hammer from Tekken yeah um, and that thing has changed everything for Machamp because it's a frame one invulnerable anti-air that juggles into insane damage. So yeah. that did a lot for him. And, you know, you got the DLC characters that came in with Blastoise and Aegislash. And, and of course, we all got new moves and everything like that. And I'm not like, I don't know, Marcos, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, d like I... F I can't help but feeling that this is sort of out of character. Am I wrong? For VGC? Yeah. Extremely. It's extremely out of character. I'm pretty sure... I, I've only been playing competitively for three years, but as far as I remember, and like I've done some research in previous seasons, there's never been a rotating format for VGC. It's always just been, here are the rules, play with it to the end of the season, have fun, don't, don't kill yourself, you know? 
Um, Because, I mean, this is just entirely out of the blue. No one had any hints about it. Um, I know trading card games tend to have rotating formats. I'm pretty sure the Pokemon trading card game has a rotating format. But uh, just the breakdown, basically, we're going to have a year-long season. um, And, well, of course, it's a year-long season. But basically, instead of starting in 2019, um, in previous years, the, the next season would begin as soon as the new year began. So... Uh, for VGC 2018, we played 2017 even after the World Championships. Right. And then as soon as uh, January 1st came around, we started playing VGC 2018. That's just the way it's been for years. And all of a sudden this year, Pokemon Company is like, hey-ho, what's popping, kiddos? Uh, we're just going to play VGC 2019 on September 4th. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, that, that literally gives you 10 days to make a team. So uh, I hope that's okay <laughs> with you guys. That's and so weird. Like- honestly... I was kind of disappointed not having that much time to prep, but I'm also very excited because everything on the ladder was so crazy. Um, But for three months, I believe, for three months, we're going to have what's called the Sun Series, which is um, the things that are banned are Mega Evolutions, uh, Z-Moves, and uh, Primal Primal Ground on Primal Kyogre, so Red Orb, Blue Orb, and Ultra Necrozma specifically, but Z-Moves are banned, so can't use it because you need a Z move to transform into it. Then three months down the road, beginning in January, uh, they're going to have the same rules, but Z moves are allowed. Still no Megas, Primals, or anything of that sort. And then three months down the road, aka when Worlds comes around, everything just goes, you know, it's just balls to the wall. Everything's released. Everyone can use whatever. You can use Megas, you can use Mega Rayquaza, you can use Z moves, Ultra Necrozma, all that sort of thing. So uh, it's going to gradually become a more insane format and in my opinion that means that despite how bulky the format is right now in the early season it's only going to get bulkier so there's going to be a lot less attack investment a lot more hp and special defense so you can live a hit why do you think that they did that because like Um, so alex do you regularly go to tournaments or do you just play online or like uh locally uh, I, I play in, I play in tournaments when they're near me, but they aren't often near me. I have traveled down to South Florida for their locals a couple times, but I don't get to travel much. So, but do they ever like? Because like it's so formats on us? yeah. So like in Smite, you have a ban list, right? Well, I'm sure in League of yeah. Legends, Smite is the only example because I played Smite for a while. But like you have a ban list every match, right? And these are the characters you can use, and these are the characters you can't use, and everyone picks their own, and then you go up against each other. But in something like a, like a, I mean, VGC is sort of a fight. It's not a fighting game, but you're competing directly against your opponent. It's not like a speed run. It's not like, uh, I don't know. It's not like a raid in Destiny or anything like that. It's like you're facing off against one opponent, um, and I don't. Th- think unless did they ever do like a uh because 3v3s were a thing in pokin right or were they not a thing yeah, in a they added it as a as an um like an option but nobody's ever really adopted it as the primary format because for one thing it makes matches take way too long right um, and pokemon company official doesn't run that many tournaments actually like pretty much everything we do we run as a community right because I can't. I can't remember. I think Evo was the last thing before Worlds that was like actually a uh, Pokemon Company run, and before that, I can't remember. Like, I think it was the Sheffield qualifiers for Worlds, but that was like months and months ago. Yeah, I was um, gonna ask, how the hell do you even get to Worlds if there aren't that many official tournaments? Well, so this year I think was, I think we had four qualifiers for Worlds, and that was it. Um, I know that last year, and was it the year before? Yeah, 2016, 2017. Um, the Europe qualifier was announced like um, like three days beforehand. So oh, it's like Pokemon Company, you yeah, you so yeah, stamps. guys, guys, practice and travel to that now in three days. Um, and for I know for um, one of the qualifiers, it was like right after Aegislash and Blastoise had come out, and it was unclear if they were banned or not because they you know there's a rule generally in fighting games where within like two or three months. You don't use new stuff because it's too new and people wouldn't know how to fight it. So if somebody found something busted, um, like Shadow Mutes used to have an infinite block string that you couldn't get out of. What? Um, yeah, back in back in season one, uh, 
pre-patch uh, first version of the game, Shadow Mitsu had an infinite block string that did chip damage, so you'd end up at 1 HP, and since he has the lowest health in the game, percentage-wise, he would have more health than you technically, so he would always win. Gross. And so, yeah, so they put, there's a limit on that where you normally don't have a character or a game played in, in a major for two or three months before, uh, you know, after release, but yeah, just they just didn't tell that. us. Yeah, so they just didn't tell us whether or not Blastoise and Aegis Slash were allowed at this one at one of the qualifiers. So we don't get much information about that. But yeah, other than they added 3v3s, but there's never been any official format besides just 1v1. And they run poke and controller only. You can't bring your own controller and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's dumb. Strict. I wish you could play yeah. stick. Yeah. It's very but, strict and very limited. So, But that's like... So... 3v3s as an option but they don't do that like in an official thing i know i, I saw a couple of, of bad intent videos where he's doing 3v3s versus people but like yeah. you never is correct me if i'm wrong singles has never been a vgc format right no singles has never been a vgc format but i've always i've always had this all right so now that rotating formats a, a, a thing right i had well this yeah now of, surprise now that it's a thing I had this idea that um, since everything's on the table at this point, now that rotating format's a thing. So I figured that when Switch comes around, they probably wouldn't drop the rotating format thing because people tend to, depending on how well this year goes, if the reception's good or bad, believe it or not, Pokemon Company listens sometimes, uh, especially to VGC. Uh, they balance the hell out of Ultra Sun, Ultra, or out of Generation 7, just around the fact that VGC was garbage uh, throughout all of Omega Ruby off of Sapphire. Um, they fix that, so they listen sometimes. I think that if this year goes well, they're going to continue to have rotating formats for every season um, following this one, uh, albeit it may be different from season to season. So I thought that maybe when Pokemon Switch comes around, they might give singles a shot. Now, the reason that singles hasn't really been a thing so far is because 6v6 singles takes forever, and 3v3 battle spot is ridiculously unbalanced yeah uh, there's a lot of things so... that just run through teams especially yeah. ultra beasts i remember like trying to seriously get into smoke on ou singles and i know it's very different than what's allowed in sort of like a vgc non-existent vgc singles format but it's like dude i gotta poop like yeah. i <laughs> i like i have things to do like my children are graduating from college like i'm an old man now <laughs> all right, all right, i can't now, now take that take that and add battle animation <laughs> yeah and yeah, add and celestela add, yeah. add bulky all skull ones uh, yeah add the fact that maybe they'll let you use mega evolutions and z moves and probably a popular z move would be Commodium z so you have to sit through that whole thing again um but yeah my, my idea for this was if we're going to do a rotating format maybe for three months out of you know the three season split or the three part split uh for one third of that we could try singles where um it would be just regular battle spot on the ladder however in tournaments um the way tournaments work of course is you play best of three sets and then on top cut it's uh once again a best of three set but just people with the best scores and then from there you get awarded championship points i think that we could speed up tournaments and have singles at the same time by making it so it's 3v3 battle spot rules during the Swiss rounds, but still best of three. Right. But in top cut, it's best of one 6v6. Okay. That's I thought weird. maybe we could try that out. Because basically so it makes it so um, it isn't as volatile. Like, it, it isn't as volatile as, um, as regular 3v3 best of three. Um, and you have to sort of prep for both. So while stealth rocks aren't really a thing in battle spot right now because um they just it's the the matches are so quick that you really don't have time to set right. them up you just want to get in get out knock out as many things as you can set up a few things stall isn't really viable you could make it so things along the lines of stall are viable but only in top cut so bringing right. them to a 3v3 wouldn't be viable well it so, makes the it yeah. makes the uh the sort of final round so to speak more interesting it's yeah, not... I mean, like, yeah. maybe someone hasn't brought a Pokemon for the entire for the entire tournament, and then it's like, bada bing, bada boom. What the hell is that? Right. It's a Beautifly. What is it doing here? It's gonna Quiver Dance. Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah, this weird. The problem... Go ahead. Oh, um, I think the only problem with that is that, um, I, I mean, thinking of it from, 
I don't know how to explain it exactly, but generally, like changing formats for the for the end of a tournament or even midway through a tournament doesn't really play so well because it's an entirely different mindset you have to switch into. And so, you know, there are some people who are really good at like someone like, like Justin Wong in fighting games who can switch from Marvel to Street Fighter to um, you know whatever else really quickly. But some people have a hard time getting into that mentality, and it's hard enough for you know some people to run a single mindset for one game. Um, so I don't know how that would work out long term, but it would be interesting. Which I, is I prefer a... singles. So yeah, I'm I'm a doubles player myself. So, but I have a lot of experience in singles. I I feel like the Pokemon community, uh, the VGC community especially, is used to having to switch mindsets, uh, because our only place to really practice is on Pokemon Showdown and on the Battle Spot, where it's um it's the regular vgc format but we have to play best of one which allows for certain things to kind of run amok a lot of gimmicks to run around so for example yeah. uh scarf kyogre is the most popular is the most popular yeah. set running around on the battle spot and on uh pokemon showdown right now for the new format but i can guarantee you as soon as i set foot in a tournament i'm gonna see a maximum of two to three scarf kyogre mm -hmm. out of maybe 15 players and the reason being is as soon as you reveal that choice scarf, they know how to play around it. Yeah. So Pokemon players, while they practice in best of one, they also have to be used to switching up to a best of three when they arrive at a tournament, because at that point, it becomes more of an information game. It's, so it's There's I, this I, weird I, synchronicity between... the and uh, I, It's only fresh in my mind because we're talking about it and I was reading the, the patch notes, but the Tekken World Tour, I, it's not over yet. And we're getting season two in, I think, two days. And there's like wall bound, uh, or it's called wall yeah. bound, but it's a wall bounce. And yeah. entire properties of moves change like completely. All the frame data, well, I'm, I mean, I'm exaggerating. It's not all the frame data, but the frame data is changing. And like the Tekken World Tour is not over. And yeah. so it's kind of weird that. The Pokemon company is also doing the same thing, where it's like, "Good luck, bye." You know, that's <laughs> I don't know. Do you so? Yeah, and they're really throwing us into the grinder at this point. Do you think it's more interesting, or do you think I, it's kind of like what the? I absolutely love this. You have no idea how boring a format gets when you've been playing. All right, so I'd like to imagine with fighting games. I play a little bit of Fighter Z. I've gotten to like one or two tournaments. Didn't do all that well because I'm running Yamcha as my anchor and even though he's a good anchor, <laughs> uh, Beerus isn't exactly good for your second character. Anyways, so uh by the way, my squad at the moment is Fusamasu, Beerus and Yamcha. And oh my god. Beerus and Yamcha I have... only serve to extend Zamasu's combos. <laughs> I haven't even touched Fighter Z, man. All right. But, I can't even uh, do a, a a single combo in in freaking Blade Strangers right now. I'm, just, I'm I need so a break. so like in fighting games, I like to imagine that you don't really get bored of a rule set because each and every fight um, is sort of just a test of individual skill, how well you know your frame data, how well you yeah. execute combos. So you don't necessarily get bored of a format because you're always going to be facing a new person. Yeah. Uh, in VGC, in order to be successful, you have to understand what's good, and you either play to what's good or play directly against what is good. Yeah. So, uh, or you can just play the middle ground like I tend to do. I tend to build some uh, pretty meta-looking teams with some obscure tech on them. For example, I'm running Substitute Roar Tapu Bulu um, because uh, Incineroar with Roar is sort of being used right now to counter Xerneas after it sets up a Geomancy. And there's a lot of Xerneas and Primal... Er, is a, there's a lot of Xerneas and Kyogre running around next to each other right now just because Scarf Kyogre is a best-of-one gimmick and Xerneas tends to do very well in best-of-ones too because if you don't take it out, you lose. Um, so Tapu Bulu is sort of my off-brand Incineroar for the Roar part of it because it, one, always scares out Kyogre without a doubt. That Kyogre, if it isn't Scarf, it's going to protect. If it is Scarf, it's switching out. While Xerneas feels comfortable just sitting in there uh, because it's so bulky, it's guaranteed to eat a wood hammer, set up a geomancy and kill it the next turn. What I do on that turn that they switch out is I just go for my substitute, I let them burn their geomancy, and then I roar them out as soon as they do that. Yeah. So it's so like I, I run sort of mid, middle ground stuff. Well, at some point, all that middle ground stuff, you've tried everything, you know what's good, you know what's bad, everything's boring, everyone's playing either the same thing or just weird stuff. VGC, VGC 2017 was just weird stuff. Well, 
the fact that we have rotating formats means that we don't have time to get bored of this. Yeah. yeah. We do not have time to get bored of this. So series one, Sun Cup or Sun Series. We're no one's bored of it yet. Everything's really cool. Everything's gonna stay cool for I assume the next four months. We have about four months worth of fun games to play, but we only have three months to play it. Then uh the moon series comes up. They release Z moves. While it doesn't seem like a big difference, it makes a hell of a big difference. Cause now I don't want my Eveltal to or no, now I don't want my my uh seed ho to live a psychic from Tapu Lele. Now I need to Eevee it to live a shattered psyche from Tapu Lele. Because right. that's gonna hurt. It just makes such a big difference. Tapu Bulu is gonna be insanely good now that it has Z Woodhammer back. Um it's and Kyogre is gonna be an absolute menace considering it has the strongest hydro vortex in the game at the moment. So yeah, it's going to make a pretty big difference. We're going to play a lot differently. The meta is going to shift a lot. And then when the Ultra Series comes out, things are going to get crazy again because Primals and everything's being released. Mega Kangaskhan is probably going to come back as a pretty decent mon, but not as good as it was in 2016 because they nerfed the hell out of it. Do you think that like alternative formats are going to become a thing now? I, 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 I don't know. I hope so. If this format if this format ends up being really good, if we all love the rotating format thing, for sure they're going to bring it back. They listen to reception when it comes to VGC, uh, or they listen to response responses when it comes to VGC a lot. So it seriously depends. Uh, because VGC isn't built into the code of the game, uh, it's something that they can update through patches and stuff. So uh, not even through patches. They can update the rule set from their website. We don't have to update our games to get the new rule set. Um, they can change whatever they need to. So what they can do is figure out what works for this season, see if we like it. And if they find out that we absolutely hated this season, like we absolutely hated 2016 and 2015, um, then, you know, they don't have to do it again. They'll find another way to adjust VGC so we enjoy it. And that's something I really appreciate about the VGC uh, metagame. It's just, it's always changing. It, and it, like, and if it isn't changing, give it a year. Yeah, so in this well, case, the- three months. <laughs> Kind of the thing about um, getting bored with the format in terms of fighting games versus something like VGC. Um, it really all comes down to support at the end of the day for anything. Because, like, I come from Street Fighter 4, and we played Street Fighter 4 for seven years before we were bored of it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but for Pokken, like, it's been two, almost three years now. And, like, I would love to switch to 3v3 just because, like, we've been doing the same thing for a while, and we don't get as many updates as other fighting games do. We don't get as many new characters. So like for the year yeah we're like the the stepchild like the the, uh, off to the side little rowdy little ADHD fighting game kid (laughs) yeah and like back when um back when they had announced um Darkrai and Scizor and Polion and Krogunk for Japan in the arcade there was an entire year where they didn't say a word to us there was not a (laughs) single tweet about Pokemon for a year and we're all just sitting here like I'm I'm tired of playing against you know like. I'm tired of playing against 1.3 Mewtwo. I would like to have 1.6 Mewtwo now, please. And they just didn't say anything. But then once DX came out and we got all those characters, then everyone was having a great time. And then it started to get stale again up until Aegislash came out. And now that, you know, Worlds passed and we didn't get any news, now we're all starting to kind of like, all right, we could use something new now. But VGC, like, Pokemon gets an update, like, every like every three years max. Like, wasn't it three years between uh, X and Y and, uh, and Gen 7? Yeah, we're starting to get our stride going. Uh, the general... Yeah. The general way it goes is uh, brand new generation. Next year, we get the director's cut of that generation, which is what I always I, I always shit on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I didn't expect it to be anything new. I'm like, this is just a director's cut of Sun. Yeah. And yeah. to be fair, the story was all right. I prefer it over Sun and Moon's story, admittedly. But we literally got three new Pokemon. That's that's all I got, personally. I don't, yeah. I don't care about the stories of the games. If you didn't know... I beat Sun and Moon in exactly 14 hours and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in exactly 13 hours. Uh, and I did not sleep that night because I had to do VGC content as fast as I could. And that's how I have this many subscribers. I'm too dedicated. I literally speed Oh, ran. my God. I played oh through my this game God. so many times. Send help. Oh, uh, yeah. my God. I, I right, paid $40 the- for Noggin Adele, honestly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how it is. I thought Noggin Adele would make a difference. And here's the thing, right? It isn't all right, don't buy the game, you don't get these Pokemon. It's you don't buy the game, you don't play VGC. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. For me, personally, I, like, the, I've played through this game so many times. And, like, I don't, I don't gen in my Pokemon, not because I have anything against it, just because I personally like 
doing the breeding and stuff. And I know, and I know for a fact, like if anyone gens versus me, it doesn't really make a difference because it's the same. It's the same thing. They're all just numbers. Um, but because I personally breed, I have played through the Generation Seven story, whether it be Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, a total of seven times. That does things to people. Well, I. <laughs> Have you seen the cutscenes in this game? <laughs> I hate the cutscenes in this game. I hate the cutscenes in in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. I did a I did a Nuzlocke and then I did a live Nuzlocke called Live Lock where people could donate and like influence the outcomes of certain scenarios. <laughs> and like it, the cutscenes are so long. Half the game is cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. And do you want to know why I did that? Do you want to know why I played through it so many times? Why, Marcos? Why? Because I got the wrong nature ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they released Beast Balls, I'm like, oh crap, I didn't realize that you could get this many Beast Balls. Now I have to play through my game again so I can oh catch God. all of the taboos in Beast Balls. <laughs> and I did. And there is a stream highlight of me breaking down mentally because i got the wrong nature on tapu bulu twice in a row oh my god mm. yeah so do you, yeah. Do you I think, so i think i remember i think somebody was shiny hunting and like trying to catch every pokemon shiny in only beast balls oh my i think that god. was a thing that's so brutal i know um i remember king nappy shiny hunting a uh, fucking crab brawler <laughs> yeah and yeah yeah that so, game is rough to go through so let's talk about cheating do you so <laughs> I can go online and I can look up frame data for a move, right? So mm. Kings like while standing two two in uh Tech N seven has XYZ frame data, right? Or mm. I can download a bot that shows me like while I'm playing the frame data of the other person's moves and my moves and everything like that. And then like with all of that muscle memory, I can go to a tournament and basically, obviously I'm not seeing the algebraic expressions like fly across <laughs> my face, like the meme, but is it's that- like Alphanakis. Uh, yeah, like is that, is that sort of thing cheating because other people don't have access to that? Because that brings me back to genning and mons and everything like that. Like it's like, cause I don't think we've ever talked about this, but it's sort of a unique thing where you have Pokemon that have these set stats and it's multiple characters that you're putting up against someone else's multiple characters with set stats and everything's always going to do this little window of damage, whether it's min or max, right? But in something like a fighting game, you know exactly everything and it's completely random and it's completely different do you so i guess i said all that to say my question to you guys is do you think that the reason cheating in pokemon is such a big deal to some people is because it's so static um well i'm gonna preface my response to this with uh my favorite quote from it's the great pumpkin charlie brown uh and I think that goes, I was told to never speak of three things, <laughs> religion, <laughs> politics, and Jenning and Pokemon. <laughs> so, all right, let me, let me be absolutely clear. You don't, we I have mean, we don't have to go there. We don't have to go yeah. there because it, it, it might get into some furry territory. So no, I'll, I'll, I'll go there for just a brief second. <laughs> okay. in, every, in everything that... <laughs> I'm going to say his name. Everything that Verlicify says about cheating, how people who <laughs> cheat should not be allowed to compete at tournaments and they should be kicked out of the tournament as soon as they're caught cheating, all of that at its most basic level is technically true. But his actions towards those people in outing them and sending, just harassing them with his fans, all of that and calling out people who have no evidence of being cheaters, uh, None of that is justified, and that makes him, honestly, a horrible person. With that out of the way, uh, I can tell you that my personal stance is I don't care if my opponent has uh, gend in Pokemon, as long as their stats are completely legal, as long as their movesets are legal. I don't care what kind of Pokeball they're in. 
I know that there are certain illegal Pokeballs, but let me tell you something. Me having my Tapu Koko in a Beast Ball, despite all the time it took me to get it in that thing, does not make it any stronger. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, yes, uh, you should not be allowed to compete if you are caught cheating. However, it's extremely difficult to be caught cheating if you cheat in a way that is that gives you legal Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, so I personally, at its most basic level, I couldn't give less of a shit. Do you yeah, know for... any? Do you know any cheaters? As um, <laughs> a person who has a lot of contacts <laughs> in the competitive community, uh, I have been offered a lot of Gen and Pokemon <laughs> okay. to help me finish my teams quicker. Um, I've rejected pretty much all of them. I think back in the day before I um, was doing YouTube, I was like, "Oh, I can get a free Pokemon!" Oh boy! <laughs> Yeah, um, free shiny, and, shiny Charizard. Yeah, and I didn't know what I was doing, um, so it's just my personal philosophy that I prefer working for that sort of thing. Um, but I understand that at the end of the day, all that matters is how well you play and how many crits you can get. So yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah. What were so, you gonna like, say earlier, Alex? Say, <laughs> um, I was gonna say that for me personally, my whole thing on cheating is like, or you know, for genning Pokemon. Um, I never really, you know, worried about it too much, but then when I started to understand how competitive Pokemon works more, um, it got to the point where I started breeding my own Pokemon and going for all the, you know, the proper stats and everything, but then one day I kind of broke where I was like, I just want a Slowbro that has Regenerator, and that's, you know, like, I want these Pokemon that have hidden abilities, and yeah. I'm too lazy, and I work a 9 to 5, and I don't have time to, like, to get a hidden ability or whatever thing. I built, like, a hundred Slowpokes and got nothing, man. Just start a competitive pokemon channel everyone will just be like hey like yeah. i'll give you free pokemon and then here's they, this they pokemon do. yeah i mean I like just today just today shout nice. outs to uh, shout outs to northwest uh one of my subscribers <laughs> literally <laughs> sent me an adamant hitmontop because i didn't have one ready oh, just like man. there's an untouched adamant hitmontop with all the egg moves i just finished making it but you can have it I'm like wow <laughs> thank you so, so much I, the yeah only go pokemon ahead. i ever played was pu tier Oh, I, played, uh, God tier. <laughs> I played PU tier because uh, Radicate and Muck were. It was right after they added Muck and Cacturn. I was like, yo, I like Muck and Cacturn. Radicate's in this tier? Oh, man, here we go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I learned to respect Floatzel, and that's about all I took away from that. Loki so, Alolan Radicate is actually a God tier Pokemon in doubles if you don't try to use it as an offensive option. I literally just use yeah. Gluttony with Snatch, and whenever there's a. Whenever there's a. Um, whenever there's a a Snorlax on the other side of the field that's like, I'm going to quick belly drum. I'm yeah. going to snatch it. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just quick attack the team to death. So, do you guys think that, because I know that, uh, I haven't played against Marcos, but he's, I mean, I suck at VGC. But I have, we, you, Alex and I did a uh, first to five, and he beat the snot out of me. So, do you guys think that, like, so here I am, Mr. Danger Moss, okay, now I decide to be a Pokemon YouTuber. And I, 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 I suck at Pokemon, and I suck at uh, Shiny Hunting, and I, I suck at uh, VGC, and I suck at Showdown. So does that make you think less of me as a, as a fan of the Pokemon franchise? Or well, I guess that's no. it, yeah. No, no, that's uh, thinking some thinking less of someone because they're bad at a video game uh, makes you what I like to refer to as a um, virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so honestly, there are people out there who will give you shit about being bad at a video game. Like, hey, look at you, you fucking suck. Hey, I bet you, I, I bet you've only been playing for like two hours and like, I bet yeah. you've only been playing for 200. Uh, yeah. You should probably change your shit bucket. <laughs> oh, like, God. I literally do this as not necessarily not necessarily like professionally right because i'm not that big sure, sure. But i spend i spend as much time on this as a second job yeah so i mean like even i with all this practice am not as good as someone with less practice but just more genuine um i don't know how to say it, brain power just well do you think intuition let me, let me ask you this do do you guys think that legacy skill is a thing? So I'll I'll ask I'll direct this question to Alex. So going from someone who's played OG Pokémon up until now, do you think that 
people who are new are generally worse than people who have been playing forever? It just depends on your ability to uptake information and um, and recognize patterns and stuff like that. And like someone with good fundamentals will always come into a game better than somebody with bad fundamentals. So like the only reason that I'm as good as I am at Pokemon, and I'm not very good, I'm like average at best. But the only reason I'm that good is because I have been playing since day one, and I just like you know pick up little hints of things here and there. I learn what's a high, what you can duck under, what's safe, what's not safe. And especially in Pokemon, a game with no execution barrier, like what's safe and what's unsafe is really all you need to know a lot of the time. Like, um, thanks Swalot who won Worlds. He doesn't know the he, he tweeted at me the other day. He doesn't know the Gengar matchup, but he won Worlds. He beat a Gengar and won Worlds. Yeah. Um, but it's just because he has good fundamentals and like he knows his character so well. So, right. if you have good fundamentals, that, that can carry you through a lot of different games. But the other thing, is, too, about being bad at video games um, is, like, a lot of people say a lot of the time that um, the, the players who go to who go 0-2 in every tournament they enter, the people who lose both games and they're out, like, in, t- you know, 25 minutes, um, but the people who do that at, consistently and keep coming back are, like, the most important people to the community. Cause, yeah, like, for sure. You know, we need those people around, and... Not, not, not necessarily that they need to lose every time, but we need that that kind of support for something like that to continue to exist. Yeah, and I mean, like, the same kind of applies to VGC, right? There are a lot of people, um, when you're winning, you refer to them as the X and 4 table, uh, <laughs> where they're playing with all these... I'm going to use a term that I'm not proud of using, but I mentally use it a lot, despite me trying to be as open as I can to new players. Uh, shit strats. Yeah. Uh, these involve things like helping or like contrary spin to skill swapping on the Arcanine and sure. close combat. Sure. Well, on paper, it sounds like, oh, wow, this is overpowered. Um, in practice, after maybe the first two turn the, turns of the game, your opponent just goes, oh, wait, I know what this is. And they just switch into their direct counter. Uh, these people tend to use just their favorite Pokemon and aren't very familiar with what's popular in the metagame right now or even how to counter it, or even what the metagame Pokemon use. So, like, they might not know that a Mega Kangaskhan carries Fake Out. So they could just get easily frustrated the game uh, and be angry at the fact that someone's using metagame strats when really it isn't them using metagame strats that's making you lose. It's you not knowing how to play against it. And uh, people who are new to a game need to find a balance between and that that honestly want to play creative like i tend to do i never enjoy having just a full copy and paste team um they need to strike a balance between using things that are good and understanding what's good and using what they want to use but not being angry at the fact that like other people are using just reliable teams like um a really, really skilled player, Diana Bros. Some people will give her crap. Uh, she's the Madison Regional Champion. Some people give her crap because, like, oh, Diana Bros only copies and pastes teams from other people. She's never built her own team. Well, let me tell you something. I can guarantee you, if I took that copy and paste team and faced Diana with the exact same team, I would win only like one out of 10 games because Diana is yeah. really well practiced, really knows her matchups, knows how to play that team as best as as best as she possibly can. And it's just overall an amazing player. You could give her a garbage team like the Spinda thing and she would still win a couple of games just because she knows her matchups, uh, even if they have messed up IVs. There are people who are so good at the game. They have, This is a true story. Uh, I believe it was at Dallas Regionals. There was a player who nearly top cut and he completely forgot to put metagrossite on his metagross dude yeah i think i read a it was it a nugget bridge article or something yeah 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 i think they're we refer to them as vgc horror stories (laughs) um so let's transition away from from pokemon talk how are you guys doing let's get let's get into uh, into your lives i know alex you just got a new job how's that going uh, it's, I'm waiting on my schedule, but it's going pretty good. I'm excited to have money again, <laughs> especially because so, I got to buy Soul Calibur when it comes out. Do you find that, because I know that once I started working, it was like, oh, well, rest in peace, my channel. I could still stream and make videos, but I don't get time to do anything else. Do you, do you find that, or do you think that, um, do you think that I'm just being lazy? <laughs> uh, 
Well, I know for a fact that I'm being lazy because I've been unemployed for like three months now, and I was sure. like, yeah, it's time to stream every day and to edit videos. That Resident Evil Revelations playthrough I started a year ago, it's time to finish the last three episodes of that. <laughs> and, uh, and here I am at my girlfriend's house in Orlando not doing any of that stuff. So, uh, um, but, yeah, the biggest thing I'm worried about is losing time to stream because... Um, I mean, my my uh my switch dock is busted now, so that's why I haven't been able to recently. Oh, but, um, dude! But coming into Soul Calibur, I want to try to stream like at least like every other day, maybe. But um, yeah, dude, Marcos, are you gonna pick rough. that up? Soul Calibur? Yeah. I'm not that big of a fighting game guy. I legitimately Come only on. Play Dragon Ball Fighters because it's 100 fan service. Come on. Yeah. I mean, and I'm decent at Dragon Ball Fighters, but like, <laughs> like yeah, I'll, I'm I'll play a, I'll play a couple of rounds, but that's just because I know how to extend my auto combo so they're not exactly automatic, but they're still <laughs> automatic. So what are you um, guys? Yeah. What are you guys excited for this year? Because I know that I so Marcos, you don't really play fighting games, but. Are you like? Are you gonna get Smash? Oh, of course I'm gonna get Smash. Have you Smash played... isn't a fighting game. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I said that just to give people shit. Um, I mean, like, I honestly don't have that many games on the horizon that I'm excited for. At one point, I was pretty excited for Fallout 76, and I pre-ordered it. Um, but at this point, I've just kind of reached a point in my life where no video game actually gives me any kind of I don't know any kind of like reward. Oh my god, that's so emo. Of... No, I not feel, really. I I'm feel not nothing emo. anymore. You can ask anyone. You, I, I look emo as shit. But if you ask anyone that <laughs> has ever met me, I am literally the same person I am in my videos. I legitimately have to turn down my personality so I'm not overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that's just that happens when you make video games a job for a lot of people. Is like you don't have time to spend on big games like you used to. You know. Yeah. yeah so like I, the only thing I find rewarding is when I go to a VGC tournament and someone goes, I recognize you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I fanboy over people that recognize me. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I was playing, uh, this was actually on one of my old Tekken streams. I was playing and someone sent me, this is back when I had my PS4. Uh, he sent me a message like, hey, you're the uh, guy who made those Verlicify videos. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, yeah, good good games, man. I was like, oh my god. And that's the first and only time I, I, outside of uh, my YouTube channel that I've even been acknowledged. Um, I, yeah, I, I've had I, it I before like in the um, in the Pokemon Discord. I've had one or two guys be like, oh, hey, you're that Blastoise guy. And I'm like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> Dude, that is such a good video. I, I, I watched the uh, – I saw that you did one on Zero Aura too, and I watched that one too. That was really good. Yeah, I really that one got no thing. traction. I was kind of shocked at how, how poorly that one went. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you I mean, never know. How, like, How soon after the Blastoise thing? Because obviously the Blastoise thing had a lot of – a lot of positive reactions uh, and got you a lot of views in that. How soon after yeah. the Blastoise thing did you make that? It was um, when I Zero Aura like, was announced, right? Yeah, yeah. It was about. <laughs> it was when he was officially announced, which is why I was kind of like, I didn't worry about it too much because it's like, yeah, this this brand new Pokemon that we've known about for like three years now or whatever. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. Um, sorry, I didn't realize. I, I completely forgot what the hell Zero Aura was, mostly because no one uses it. Anyways, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyways, I thought. For a minute, I thought it was like a character in Poke, and I'm like, wait, they haven't. Added oh my it. god! Honestly, the gosh, reason wow. that one didn't receive as much was because, and I learned this the hard way after. All right, Loki, my channel's blown up three separate times, and I'm only taking advantage of of it once. Okay. Uh, basically, if you find something that works, so for example, I did a uh, VGC session where I used Galissapod as soon as ultra sun and ultra moon came out or as soon yeah. as sun and moon came out i did that mm -hmm. and it got thousands and back then like thousands i mean i still only average around like 1.5 thousand but like dude then, that's like, still a lot my videos seven, people don't want i don't even think i have 3k subscribers dude i think it's fake i think people have been like sub botting my channel dude i i don't i <laughs> I can't remember the last time I got a thousand views. Dear God, Mark, oh, Mr. Like, Moneybags over here, Daddy Warbucks. Nice. I, I have fifty bucks a month. That's trying to, anyways. trying to, yeah, trying to get people to pay for, uh, for Memphis. I see you over All there. Right. <laughs> I, I legitimately need that help. I'm a low-class college student. Anyway, so, um, like as soon as that video took off, I'm like. All right, Marcos, let's think about this. I, I, I sat down and talked to myself because I had been doing YouTube. For 
for like two years at that point yeah. and nothing. I was at a hundred subscribers and all of a sudden I had 400 at the end of the night. It had been and like three like, hours. Oh! Later. Yeah. I was freaking out. And then I go, we have to ride this one out. Yeah. And I made, yeah. I made daily videos for like the next month and a half. It was unhealthy. It was unhealthy, but that skyrocketed my channel from 400 to a thousand within that month and a half, which admittedly is slower than 400 in a, in a night. Uh, but still, I was not going to grow. The Pokemon community is very fickle. You only grow when new oh, stuff yeah. comes out. Oh, yeah. And the fact that my channel For is sure. growing at the moment, specifically because of VGC 2019, is a dream come true. Because I don't want to be a Pokemon channel. I want to be a VGC channel. Yeah. So when I released that, uh, when I released the Kyogre video, and I, I knew what I was doing as soon as I saw the Kyogre video, I said, or as soon as I thought of the Kyogre video, I said to myself, all right, Marcus, VGC 2019 just got announced. <laughs> I sat myself down again. I gave myself a lecture. I said, Marcus, VGC 2019 just got announced. Let's look at what's being used and what's probably going to be the best. I guessed right. I guessed completely right. I'm like, Kyogre is legitimately the best Pokemon in this format. 55% of people on the ladder are using it at the moment. Wow. So I took a day a day and a half actually and i played as many games as i could i saw how people were running it and as soon as i saw generally what teams with kyogre looked like i made a flow chart on how to build a team with kyogre and i took and i made a 25 minute video explaining how the flow chart works now how you can build a very reliable team for early sun series meta uh and i've received a lot of love on that video it's sitting at uh i think it's about to break 5k views and it's only been a week uh and I get nothing but praise on that video at the moment. So I'm like, all right, it's blown up. The channel's blowing up. I, I've gotten 300 subscribers in the course of two weeks now. How do I follow it up? And I made a video of what a subscriber suggested. They're like, tell me how to beat Xerneas. And I said, all right, yeah. I can't lose my channel. And I said, I can't lose my channel identity here because up until this point, I've been doing discussion videos, right? Where I like, I talk and I make a crack jokes about VGC stuff. Yeah. And I just have a generally chill video. I said, I can't just do a straight up video talking about what beats Xerneas. I have to, I can't allow my channel to become a, sure. here's what beats it. Let me sure. talk about it. Right. I have to like actually add something in there. So I, I took 18 hours out of my day, legitimately 18 hours on a weekend and wrote this entire script, edited oh the whole video, God. did the entire thing within one day and uploaded Ugh. it at 10 58 PM. Dude, I've never ever written a script for one of my videos. I uploaded that shit at 10:58 p.m. and it blew up again and I got even more positive reception on that with people saying, "I love that this isn't just a straight up like yeah. oh, here's what beats what. It's actually right. funny." And I'm like, "Cool, right. I'm not funny, but thank you. You're not making a combo video. It's not just yeah. like, here, look at this." But now I'm in this tough spot. YouTube's been in a very unhealthy relationship for me. I um I like to imagine myself as the neglectful father of my own YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> Why? Because I'm really excited when I'm when I'm making videos. I'm really excited to continue making videos when the channel is doing well. Uh, and is then there a bicycle do, here? No, it's my ringtone. <laughs> and then as soon as my videos are doing well, I lose a lot of motivation to make videos because I get extremely stressed about the advent of making a video and having yeah. it not perform well. Yeah. So at the moment, yeah. I am writing a script for this next week's video and i'm not sure what that is yet i have the word the in big ass print oh on the top my left god oh, and up. i have to this i have to finish this video by thursday or friday for the patreons and yeah. have it uploaded by saturday and until then i'm just doing live streams every night but i'm also overwhelmed with school at the moment so i have just been running back and forth between yeah. my computer my classes in the gym yeah. and i am always overwhelmed yeah. i just got out of a really unhealthy but loving relationship with someone that i cared about very much so there's a lot on my plate at the moment oh <laughs> papa bless man rest yeah. in peace <laughs> so like i'd like to reach a point in my life where i have good grades a healthy youtube channel and a relationship with someone but as of right now i have two of those it's like that triangle meme where it's like pick two and it's like friends. Yeah, and food. fast. It's, it's uh, you could get something fast, you can get something cheap, or you can get something high quality, but you can only have two of each. I have two. I yeah. have the you grades and the YouTube you channel. That's it. You don't get to have a girlfriend and be good at fighting games. <laughs> yeah. Unless you did what I did. I had my, well, now my ex girlfriend. Uh, I was dating her for like two years. Uh, we knew each other in high school and then she moved out. Get a long distance thing 
But n- enough about All that. right, everybody. Um, Welcome I... to the Danger Community <laughs> Podcast. Uh, does but, anybody um, else have any uh, tragedies get... that you'd like to talk about? Let us know in the I... Discord. <laughs> I gifted her Mortal Kombat 10 on Steam, and we would practice together. She was a... Um, not Raiden. What was his name? I completely forgot. The spinny hat guy. The other Kung one? Lao. Kung Lao. Uh, Kung Lao, yeah. She was a Kung Lao main, and I was a Reptile main until I bought um, the Alien DLC because I fucking love Alien. Gross. Uh, and I was an Alien main. So I do play some fighting games, but it's like limited entirely yeah. to the first two months of when a Mortal Kombat game comes out and whenever there's Dragon Ball Fighters DLC. So yeah, I remember... You... Um... Go ahead. Uh, I remember um, CEO 2016... I believe top eight of um, Mortal Kombat X had uh, five alien players in it. Out of the <laughs> and I love that when when my favorite character of Mortal Kombat and my favorite horror movie franchise all of a sudden becomes a top tier character. I'm like, okay, yeah. we have a chance to be good. And then I didn't practice and I stopped playing. And I'm like, Mortal Kombat's well, dumb. Yeah. That's like my favorite character in Dragon Ball is Kid Boo, so I got off pretty lucky. <laughs> my favorite right. character in Dragon Ball is fucking Beerus, so screw you. So... <laughs> Are you guys excited for Smash? Uh, I'm, I'm very excited, excited to because... Smash. I'm on Tinder. <laughs> oh my god. What were you saying, Alex? Um, I'm very excited because, it's like, so I already had everything I wanted, right? Because, I mean, I, I play Smash, like, yeah. you know, casually. I'm yeah. pretty good at it, but I play casually. And so I had every character I wanted, and then Ivysaur was back. I'm like, yeah, Ivysaur is awesome. Squirtle's awesome. And I'm like, cool. I don't need any more characters. I'm good. And then they said uh, Richter Belmont, and I was yes. like, all right, okay. And then they said Dark Samus, and I have literally not thought about anything else since they announced Dark Samus. What? Right, wait, have you seen, have you seen uh, Team Four Stars Broly dub? I actually, that is the only one I've watched, actually. Oh my god. There what? Is a scene, there is a scene where um, Paragus comes onto the planet and goes, uh, Prince Vegeta, or should I say King Vegeta, and Vegeta just, Vegeta just goes, I have never needed something so much in my life and not know it until I had it. That was me yeah, when yeah, they yeah. announced Ridley. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just excited for K. Rule, man. I want to play a snake again. I want to play as freaking yeah. Cloud. I think All I want okay. to see is snake snap the neck of Mega Man. So let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about uh, let's get into. Um, I want to sort of direct this conversation more and each of you could take uh, turns, but I wanted to talk about, I know that we mentioned this, but I want to talk about the, whatchamacallit, uh, Blade Strangers, I'm Blade Strangers, I just said that because it's in front of my face, the uh, <laughs> freaking leaks, where is that, I'm trying to pull it up on, uh... Smash 4 leaks? Or no, Smash no, 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 Wow. What? Wow. That's crazy. I love Animal crazy. Crossing. Animal. Okay. <laughs> uh so the bloody blah bloody 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 blah. How do I find my freaking Oh my god, it was recent too. I wish I could film. I'll ramble about Blade Strangers while you look for that. <laughs> I don't know what Blade Strangers is. Yeah, so tell, tell about Marcos about, about Blade, Blade Strangers. Okay. I'm looking for so this Blade freaking Strangers. Yes. Blade Strangers, for anybody who doesn't know, is a very fun new fighting game. It just came out five, I think five days ago. Um, it is a Nicalis fighting game, and if anybody doesn't know, Nicalis is the publisher of games like Binding Cave Story Isaac. and Binding of Isaac, My and Shovel Knight is in there. Freaking game. Yeah. Look. So you have uh, there's four characters from Code of Princess from the DS, um, which is Solange and those characters, and then there's um, Cave Story, there's Binding of Isaac, there's Shovel Knight. Um, there are characters from um, something Kawase. It's like wait, wait, wait. Something Kawase. The fighting the characters in the game are from Binding of Isaac and other Nicholas games. Yes, yeah, it's a crossover uh... fighting game. So I, it's only Isaac that's in it, like from no. Binding of Isaac. Oh my the last five char- The last Hold five characters the- they announced were. Huh? I'm finding it now. <laughs> oh my god. The, the last five characters they announced were Gunvolt, Shovel Knight, Isaac, quote, and. Um, Oh, it was those four, and then uh, Lena, the final boss character. But yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, it's simplified controls, um, where it's directional input plus um, the S button to do your specials instead of doing a motion. But it is very old school fighting game. Like it's very very good. Um, like, and they they found a way. So it's only four buttons, but they found a way to have you do. You can still do light special, heavy special, then EX special. There's two levels of. Stuff, right? um, uh, yeah, yeah. There's. Uh, three or four directions for everyone 
Um, and there's the supers are one are uh, one input, three buttons for a super, and then if you press down on those three buttons, you get another super. And if you double tap the button, you get a level two super. And um, EXs cost half a meter instead of one meter. There's reversals, there's um, offensive skills, so it's it's pretty good. It's like really in depth, and I've been enjoying it a lot. But I'm playing the scumbag. Yeah, it's out. It's been out for like five days. Uh, so, you didn't know about Blade Strangers? Man. I didn't know about Blade Strangers. Binding of Isaac's legitimately yeah. my favorite bullet hell freaking Metroidvania is shit. What is that? What's the freaking thing? <laughs> dungeon, dungeon crawler. Yeah, I don't know what yeah, like a roguelike kind of thing. My roguelike. That's what it's called. It's yeah. legitimately my favorite roguelike ever made. I have hundreds of hours. I think I actually had a thousand a couple weeks ago. Thousands of hours in the Binding of Isaac. Yeah. All right, well, here we I go. Here tell we go. You, go ahead. Go the, ahead. Yeah, uh, real quick. Last thing. The uh, the fun thing about Isaac is his super, his his like regular super. Level one is Archangel. Level two is Horror of Babylon. So. And one of his, I, cool. I just saw the trailer. One of his special, one of his um specials is Mom, right? Yeah, the, that's that's his down super is the the Mom's foot, and he has Mom's knife as his forward special. Um, and when you press back special, he drops a spider that tra like jumps and chases you. And um, whenever you drop one of the little animal buddies, it goes, you are a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking so. at the Shovel Knight trailer right now, and I have to say, I love Shovel Knight in, like, actual humanoid-looking form. Yeah. It's, you, it's a beautiful you love, thing. All right. You love big Shovel Knight. <laughs> yeah, I got it. never did I know I needed something so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone shut up. Here we go. We're talking leaks. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so the first one is the more ridiculous one that I saw on Jinx Club's Twitter. Um... So, what the heck? Okay, so uh, the tweet says, uh, take it with a huge grain of salt. And it's from uh, VP, Gen 8, obviously by Anonymous. Uh, friend is working on regional translation team. She was vague as to what she has seen so far, but here's what I got out of her. Save these, official announcement in February 2019. Okay, here's the green text. Next region is Honai region based on southeast china starter theme is myths and fables a lion snake buffalo story focuses on tradition versus innovation regional professors and understudy of oak he will be central to the series forward with the passing of the torch between the two symbolic of series moving to the switch jim's return with some familiar faces 30 percent of the story takes place in johto not including post game Regional forms are back, including Hoot Hoot and Noctowl, Whooper and Quag Quagsire, Fanfi and Donphan and Dunsparce. 87 new Pokemon are introduced. New Pokemon include Ground Fairy Armadillo, Ground Type Capico, Dark Fighting Howler Monkey, and a Rock Grass Avocado. <laughs> Box <laughs> legendaries represent innovation and share a connection to Ho Oh and Lugia. Ho-Oh and Lugia have new heritage forms with a type swap. Apex rings are the new Gen 8 gimmick. Effect varies by Mon, which can grant stat boosts, new abilities, and even change type for a certain Mon. Apex ring developed by regional professor. Antagonist team uses technology to upgrade Honai legendaries. What do you guys think? Uh, I gotta say it sounds pretty believable if one thing lines up. Can you tell me what animals the starters are based off of again? Uh, lion, a snake, and a buffalo. Lion, a snake, and a buffalo. Let's take a look. Every fire type up until this point has been on the Zodiac. Are we you serious? Have... Yes. There is a snake on the Zodiac as well as a buffalo. Or a bull. So yeah. we have a snake and a bull. So it sounds legit-ish. There's nothing too outlandish. I, I mean, the apex rings. I believe it. I would probably believe it. I'm not, like, 100% on board. But because we've had a new battle mechanic for every uh, generation, uh, the Apex Rings, considering it doesn't sound as grandiose as Mega Evolutions, it's and a Z it's a, a it's a Roto Boost. Yeah, it sounds like say, Roto yeah. Boost. And Z Stones were a step down from Mega Evolutions too, in terms of how grandiose they were. Um, it's not like this big event. I mean, like Z moves kind of are right, but not as much as physically changing this thing. All this, all this Apex thing does is grant either a stat boost or change an ability or type. Yeah. So maybe they can give Flygon bug typing or something like that. I it don't know. Eighty-seven. Like physically change. Eighty-seven new Pokemon introduced, dude. We've be, we've been a little light on new Pokemon, bro. Come on. I honestly, I think they realized that adding that many new Pokemon would is ridiculous. Just be 
Yeah. So like adding eighty seven sounds like a reasonable number. I mean, what do we get in uh what do we get in Alola? Like seventy 100? no 70? what? Yeah. Wait. Like Gen, oh. Gen six was seventy. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, you're right. 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 We've true had less. True, true, so true. like it's this sounds like one of the more believable leaks. And yeah. I mean, right. considering that they just recently added Chinese translations in Generation Seven, they made a big deal that's about true. that. They're like, by the yeah. way, we now have um, was it traditional Chinese and yeah. simplified Chinese. So, uh, yeah. I, yeah. This sounds one hundred percent possible, and I would argue this is the most believable leak I've heard so far. Alex, your thoughts? Yeah, um, I'd be excited because I love China. Anything, I think China is super cool. And I used to take Chinese classes, so I'd be really down for that. Um, I know I can speak for um, Silva, my girlfriend. We would both be very excited for new ho- for new uh, Lugia yeah. transformations. Yeah. That's uh, the part that I'm Dunn's not course. on board with. <laughs> uh, I'd say I love I love new forms for anything. I know a lot of people don't like the new forms for Megas or whatever and stuff like that, but I think it's really cool. Oh no, I mean, I'm, like, uh, yeah. well, I'm down for the uh, avocado. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, avocado would be great. So, we still right. on that chair Pokemon, though. Yeah, okay. People have been talking about that chair for so, years. Yeah, okay. So, the <laughs> the uh, the next one that Jinx Club said is more uh, believable, and there's like a photo which looks like some sort of leak. I don't know. Um, for all, those of you listening, this is just on. I'm I'm just on Jinx Club's Twitter, and I have uh, the the 4chan VP open in a new tab. So you can you, you can find it. this right now. Um, you should add it to the layout at some point. Um, so champion red for Pikachu title, champion blue for Eevee title. I believe that. Beyond <laughs> evolution episode, finish your title to face harder players around the region again with higher level mons and mega evolutions, and then more important faces. Uh, which is basically cool. Delta episode, right? Um, yeah, Anna, that sounds extremely believable. But the issue is, I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because, uh, like, I know I'm, I, I'm more of a competitive player. So, like, let's go Pikachu. Yeah. Let's go. We don't hold that much weight to me. A little. They're gonna be good games, but a little. Yeah, I'm very excited for them. A little whale can be received from the Go application. It's pink. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you get. A special gift for completing the Pokedex. It's a pendant that increases different colors in Overworld. Oh, it's the Shiny Charm. Okay, so the Shiny oh. Charm is in this game, apparently. Nice. Uh, play as important trainers like Sabrina only on the online hub. Okay, so you can change your... So you get unlockables oh. to customize. Yeah, I was going to say, model. it yeah. sounds like oh. what Dragon Ball Fighters does, where you can yeah. choose like a little chibi person. Yeah. So this yeah. all sounds 100% legit. There's nothing outlandish um, there. It sounds very Nintendo. Well, power, power like, um, for, for online, you just change your costume to look like Sabrina right. or whatever. Yeah. 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 Powerful moves can be motion controlled and unleashed with Joy-Cons. Trailer com- oh. trailer coming for those on the 6th? Yeah, I mean, so, if they're going to have Megas, they're going to have Z-Stones. Yeah, I was going to say, do the Z-Dances. Yeah, but you do the Z- you activate your Z-Move by, like, shaking a joy... Oh, the Z- Oh my god, Alex! Yeah. You do the dance! Two- yeah, because yeah, you have one in each hand and you do the dance. Oh yeah. my that, god! That, that came out, like... <laughs> A year ago. Oh my god! <laughs> they're, like, they're like, hey, in the next Pokemon title, you're gonna, you're gonna able to physically do the Z do the dance, I'm like, dude. I'm yeah. down. And I'm, I'm glad down. That's, That's I'm glad sick. This is just let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. Because if I had to do that at tournaments, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people yeah, do the Z moves at tournaments as like a joke, but yeah. But when they so... start running this as a format, you know. Yeah, really come on, oh, man. No. It's no, the next game. No, they're not going to have time to run it as a format because VGC 2019 is on Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. It's already been confirmed. You'll start VGC 2020 in like February. You'll start dancing, dude. (laughs) I'm. I will not play that season of VGC where we only have cancer (laughs) Pokemon. And you have to dance. You have to dance. So I'm up against Moxie Boofs next, next in bracket, and I know for a fact he doesn't have Z moves because he refuses to dance. Yeah, um, I know he doesn't. Me? He doesn't excuse know me. shattered. He doesn't know the shattered psyche dance. So I nah, this is an yeah. auto win. I have, it's an I auto have a win. Powerful dance. I legitimately <laughs> practice capoeira. Oh no. my god! <laughs> you know, you know, so you how know is that different order? from doing the the uh, the Z moves? The difference between doing that and the Z moves is my foot actually connects with someone's face. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I mean, like, you know who Eddie Gordo is. Of course you played Tekken. Yes. It's literally oh. that. I know. All right. Uh, so there were some Smash leaks that I wanted to talk about. I can't really remember, and I don't want to look for them. Uh, when it's, Snake it was, snaps Builder's neck, he just dies. It was Ken, right? It was Ken. I don't know. That was supposedly mined. Uh, Ken as an Echo Fighter. Bandana Waddle D. Right? Was that yeah. right? If you guys don't know, then yeah. I don't know. Um, if we can some with Waddle D, I'd be very happy. Yeah. I know people have talked about Shadow since they haven't shown his assist trophy yet, so yeah. he's up for grabs. Yeah, honestly, I feel like... I honestly think Waluigi is still possible, but more as... All right, so the assist trophy is like tennis Waluigi. I know that. Right. Yeah. So, like, I can imagine, like, just having a Wario-style Waluigi. Because, like, we have biker Wario and we have regular Wario as just costumes. So, legitimately, just, like, right. costume style would justify having him be a completely different thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up because I don't want to keep you guys too long. I've enjoyed this and I want to talk more. We should do another one of these if you guys are down. Um, yes, Daddy. Yeah. Johnny, yes. Johnny. Yes, Papa. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching slash listening. Um, I really enjoyed doing this. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys enjoy this sort of thing. And uh, I'll hit up Marcos and Alex to do some more. Uh, you guys go ahead and plug your channels. Alex, we'll start with you. Um, I'm Yubari Eradicate on everything. Um, on Twitch, YouTube, uh, Twitter. Most active on Twitter these days, but uh, whenever Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee come out, I do plan on doing a co-op playthrough. Maybe not entire playthrough, but we're going to do at least a couple episodes, me and my girlfriend, Silva. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I do Pokémon and I do... Um, I'm going to be doing Soul Calibur in October, so... Yep. Nice. Marcos, you're, you're next. <laughs> oh, I am. Uh, my name is... Uh, on YouTube, uh, you can find me at <laughs> http colon forward slash forward slash www <laughs> y o u t u b e dot com forward slash Moxie Boosted. Oh my uh, god! Moxie Boosted on all of my social media except for Pornhub, where my username is Churros oh with a zero. Oh my god! <laughs> I upload my Overwatch gameplay over there. I have a <sighs> highlight. Of course. Of course. You think I'm joking? I like I actually uploaded I can't a Twitter and highlight. You guys. All right. <laughs> Anyway, I love you guys so much. You guys are becoming really, really good friends of mine, and I enjoyed having you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, yep, thanks and for having us. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. And that's going to be it for me. I'm actually going to stop recording, and I'm going to exit the call almost at the same time. So uh, <laughs> right. I will Hopefully see you guys definitely. around, and I'll send you guys a draft of the video once I'm done editing it. And that's it. All right. You guys have uh, been great. Right. I have been the Danger Moss, and I will see you next time. Bye! Yeah, bye. Great job, guys. Dangerous Thanks. Moss. I'll see you guys. See ya. Yeah, see you around. Bye.